This is a podcast of the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Today we speak with Dr Jacob McKnight about neonatal nursing in Kenya. Morning Jacob. Morning. Can you tell us about nursing care for sick babies in Kenya? Yes. Um, the first thing to, um, to mention before I really begin is that I'm a small part of a big team in Nairobi and um, while I'm helping organise, uh, the people doing the hard work are out there probably doing night shifts last night, in fact. Um, but yeah, uh, what I can tell you about neonatal nursing in Nairobi is that these nurses are extremely busy. They have uh, very busy working lives, but also personal lives. So in the hospital, we're, um, we see very big ratios um, of, of nurse to patients, something like one nurse to perhaps 45 sick, um, sick babies uh, on the war shifts. And, um, and then again, there's some lack of resources um, uh, some kind of lack of appreciation as well. Um, and then, of course, these nurses have their own personal lives. They, they have um, families and sometimes ha they need other jobs to pay the rent. Um, so they're very busy and very stressed as a result of, uh, of, of, of this particular situation. Um, so they're, they're the most immediate things. But then there are other things as well about management styles and about the way that the, the wards themselves are, are run. Um, and then some more cultural issues as well about how these tiny, very sick children are seen. What are the ethnographic challenges? The ethnographic challenges are, are quite significant. Um, the, the first of them is that uh, the, there's a period of scandal in, in nursing in Nairobi in particular at the moment. The national press has, have covered um, some significant scandals in some of the hospitals we're working in. In addition, there's, um, there, there are strikes and legal cases and all these kinds of things. So nurses are very reticent to talk. Um, and then in addition, um, we are in these extremely busy wards and we're studying why these nurses are so busy. We don't want to take them out um, and take their time. So just getting the work done can be quite difficult. Can you tell us a bit more about your team's research? Sure, yeah. We, um, we are uh, finding, as I said, the, um, some, some very interesting stuff around the, the, just the immense pressure that these nurses are under. Um, but within that, um, they still turn up for work. So what do they do on the shift? How do they, how do they get through it? Um, they put in significant uh, effort to, to cope with these extremely stressful environments and this, this very emotional job. Um, and, and that's something that we see anchoring the shift in, 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 at both ends um, and some certain tasks that they that they, they uh, elevate within their job to give them um, some kind of a reprieve. Um, but this is all quite, uh, it's ongoing research, and so these are all very early findings. Um, but, but yeah, it's a, it's a very peculiar um, and, and interesting uh, field because, because of the stress that's on these, these nurses. Which are the most important lines of research that have developed in the last five to 10 years? Well, I think um, what I'm most proud of with this project and, and the reason I'm involved really is that we, um, we have, we've given ourselves a chance to learn about an environment um, before we jump in with any particular intervention. Um, so uh, here, this is a, this is a very um, particular situation. And then as I've mentioned, the, the, the nurse is very stressed. There's lots of political context, economic context to, to their working lives. And uh, by conducting ethnography, we have a chance to learn about all of that before we devise a strategy to go in and help. Um, so I'm part of a larger team which will draw together various strands of evidence to try and design something that fits um, based on the best evidence rather than just something that we thought of or we, something that we took from the international literature and just dropped into a new context. Why is this research so important and why should it be funded? For uh, that last reason in particular, it's, it's quite novel um, in, in the field and I think uh, um, the, the larger uh, field of public health could, could do with a bit more of that. Uh, but in particular with, with newborns, um, the, uh, we've missed in Sub-Saharan Africa um, quite a few of the Millennium, millennium Development Goals and some of the other targets that have been set. Um, and it's been identified that these, uh, the first two days of a child's life, are, are, they're particularly vulnerable. Um, and for, for children that are born in hospitals, uh, the survival rates in, in, these, in these hospitals can be quite poor. So this is uh, an area that for, if, if we get it right, we could have a, a really large effect, um, which, yeah, is what we're aiming for. Finally, how does this research fit within translational medicine in the department? Within translational medicine, well, yeah, some of the things that I mentioned about um, how uh, this project is different um, are also part of the kind of larger trend of uh, uh, translational 
medicine. I understand that term in meaning that um, you need to be more careful about how you bring new ideas, new treatments, et cetera, et cetera, to the field. Um, and here, obviously, we're spending a lot of time in the field before bringing through an intervention. So um, I, I think this is very much an example of that, albeit in health system strengthening rather than in drug development and such, which is where I think that phrase is often used. Thanks very much, Jacob. Thank you.